Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I vlog daily to keep you updated on the real life situation in my country as this awful war with Russia continues. But I'm sure we will win and it is not based only on my predictions, feelings or being optimistic or being Ukrainian, but also on the facts and on the analysis of many people whom I respect and whom I've learned during this war. I have decided to introduce you to two military analysts who, whom I read and follow, and this is Ben Hodges and Tom Cooper. Honestly, before the start of this war, I was totally anti-war person, and like a combination of these female features that don't like military stuff, and a combination of a person who considers war a great tragedy, and I have always avoided articles, books, films about wars, the first, the second, other wars for me it was like um uh, if i cannot um uh, like why should i <laughs> and i this does not mean that i was totally uninterested like i've introduced myself to this important period of human history but at the same time i totally disliked them in art in culture and i avoided that and before the war, I was also closely following what was Putin saying, how he was threatening Ukraine. I was always reading the articles of various intelligence services that were warning Ukraine that full-scale war will start pretty soon. But like with my normalcy bias, with uh, like logics that is present in our heads, I believe nothing really serious will happen. And subconsciously, I have chose those specialists who would say like, no everything going to be fine, maybe there will be some uh, minor uh, conflicts uh, on the east and we had lots of soldiers and Ukrainian armed forces protecting this area of anti-terroristic operation or how they called it. So I was trying to calm myself down. After this war started at dawn so um, violently, uh, so cruelly, I have uh, like no choice then to learn lots of military terms, lots of military tactics and strategies. Like I consider myself a curious person and when you are like that, you cannot like hide away from the things that you don't like. And typically if I come into a particular field where I have to cope with something, I try to learn everything I can about that. And I have stopped listening to Putin, of course, because for me, he does not exist as a politician. He does not exist as a military leader or whatever. For me, he is just pure evil, crazy, and there is no need to listen to him because what he says has nothing to do with uh, reality at all. I totally disrespect him and uh, I ignore him. If I disrespect someone, I don't follow like... Um, his speeches or whatever uh, and that's why I had this need for information and of course there are lots of Ukrainian sources that I follow some Ukrainian vloggers some military specialists whom I like or whom I like from time to time uh, depending on what they say and does it uh, like coincide with what I think because all of us are subjective but also these are internationally renowned people and number one among them is definitely Ben Hodges who is a retired Amer American uh, military but I personally believe there are no retired military, retired doctors, retired teachers or other stuff. These are like vocations and they always stay with you. So he is, uh, he was also uh, the um, commander general of uh, United States Army Europe. So he knows the situation in Europe pretty well and it seems to me until 2018 so it's pretty fresh and um, he is uh, very professional and unbiased in what he says and um, what I personally like about his analytics is that he never describes Russia as a superpower. That is a propaganda myth that was created by Russian government investing billions of dollars into advertisements, into conversations, into bribing EU and American politicians, pretending that Russia is the very strong country. Russia is the strongest army, the second strongest army in the world, and so on and so forth. And many of them still continue this narrative. Ben Hodges does not, and he never describes Russia as a superpower. He more describes it as a dumb bear, 
that is ready to sacrifice hundreds of thousands of its soldiers and fill trenches with future corpses of uh, Russian soldiers who are zombied by Putin's propaganda. That's exactly how I see Russia and uh, any of their temporary victories that especially took place in the beginning of uh, this war, they were not dictated by strategy, by strands, but they were the results of uh, this sacrifice of thousands of people and total, I don't know, violence uh, against Ukraine and against their own soldiers. So for me, I honestly believe they simply fill the trenches and they believe that they will win this war only by prolonging it. This is not a victorious uh, strategy. <clears throat> this does not describe country as a strong country and military as a like confident military. This is just a belief that West will get tired of Ukraine by targeting civilian infrastructure. They will cause more waves of refugees to the EU. EU is tired of uh, refugees and EU people will start pressing their government. So let's close the eyes on what is happening in Ukraine. Inside Ukraine, people will get tired without electricity, with their infrastructure and cities destroyed. And somewhere after the years of uh, such miserable existence, um, this war will turn into the direction Russia wants it. That's how uh, Hodges describes briefly the strategy of Russia and this strategy is not victorious. This is an exhaustion strategy that of course will lead to their loss, not the victory. Because from what we see, especially in the second half of 2022, European countries, the United States, Canada, other countries that support us saw that Ukraine is not going to give up, that we are strong, brave and confident. And for us, it is an existential fight. Plus, we are fighting not only for Ukraine, but for normalcy in the world, for peace in Europe. And uh, they realize a need to support Ukraine. And we see it with um, the results on Rammstein group meetings. We see it in the number of weapons that are headed to Ukraine and in speeches and even in the elections all over Europe. I see that uh, fewer pro-Russian, pro-Putin politicians are popular uh, contrary to what was in 2021, 2022, at the beginning of this year, last year, for example. So uh, what I also like about Ben Hodges' analysis is that he says that Ukraine will return Crimea Many um, specialists, politicians are still very, very careful about that. Uh, they try to predict, uh, will it cause escalation? Will it cause nuclear bombing of Ukraine or other countries because Putin treats it as the territory of Russia? But uh, Crimea is Ukraine and it's strategically important to punish uh, Russia for its annexation. If it was done back in 2014, we wouldn't have this war today. I'm like 100% confident. And also it's important for the development of uh, the southern uh, region of Ukraine and people in Crimea want to be a part of a civilized world so we cannot leave them and uh, it must be a part of Ukraine. And I'm sure Putin is uh, a covered and he will not use nuclear weapons because this is suicide for him. And this will not give him anything like, uh, okay, destruction, death. But once again, Ukraine will continue fighting for its future and its freedom and the rest of the world will support it. So it's just like signing a death sentence to himself. And he's so over concerned about his life, his health and so on. So honestly, I think that Crimea must return in Ukraine. And I do like the plan of Hodges that it returns back to Ukraine in the August 2023. Another uh, specialist that I like is Tom Cooper. He is an Austrian military specialist and he likes very detailed the analytics of step-by-step -step actions of Russian army and Ukrainian army. He is not always like 100% positive about Ukrainians. He tries to describe everything in this neutral manner. What steps are uh, wise from the Ukrainian point of view, what steps are wise from the Russian point of view and like it's interesting uh, but um, like um, in general uh, of course he sees this war as a great 
failure of Russia because being so big, creating this myth of really strong army, uh, they demonstrate that they are losing and they are losing actively. And um, the only reason that Putin, one of the main reasons why Putin started this war was that he wanted more power and he wanted to stay at power. And his elections, next elections, presidential elections, like if they exist in Russia, uh, are May 2024. So he has like less than an, a, a year to win because he has to demonstrate trends that he's like this macho style leader. And um, it is really difficult because this war demonstrated huge corruption in the Russian army because they lack like everything that they have in the document and it does not exist in reality. Look at the ammunition of the soldiers. And also it showed the huge level of incompetence. Look at how many generals he changed during this war. Like we have one solution <laughs> doing the job and uh, they have changed many of them. I cannot count them. Like I don't like counting uh, Russians, only dead <laughs> Russians, but not like Russian generals. He has so many generals, he can even create a division of them, but the results are poor. And of course it is um, like a problem because this war, that was supposed to make Putin feel stronger, to demonstrate his uh, power, actually led to the demonstration of his incompetence and corruption that exists in Russian government and in Russian army. And also the one of these unusual points of view, maybe a little bit less traditional, is that Tom Cooper says that many of the weapons that we receive from our allies, these are high precision weapons, like, I, I don't know how, if I'm correct, like, um, they help to target specific things and that this kind of weapons are really good for uh, the wars that many Western countries conducted in the 20th century because they help to destroy a particular house or kill a particular person like, I don't know, jihadists and so on. But it does not work with hundreds and thousands of Russians that march together with their tanks on the battlefields. And here he believes that artillery is the most important. And for example, I like this phrase, he said like those videos where HIMARS destroy a particular um, vehicle look very sexy, but uh, 90 artillery uh, shells can destroy a uh, huge like part of the battalion and that works better in the conditions of this very real Russian-Ukrainian war, something that uh, many people did not believe was possible in the 21st century after so many bits of experiences of the uh, 20th century. But anyway, I'm uh, like satisfied that I have found this to uh, people to read their updates and to look at the success and mistakes of the Ukrainian armed forces. I'm sure that our specialists also follow attentively various uh, analytics that is um, available globally because Ukrainians like to learn. Uh, Russians like to teach, they think so. And Ukrainians like to learn. And I think that learning is a very, very, very important ability. Let me know what are the other uh, analytics that uh, you are reading. Uh, maybe I will start reading them uh, because like the more you learn, the more prepared you feel. And in conditions and circumstances of war, it is always better to be uh, prepared. Once again, thank you for your sweet and warm comments uh, below the video when we visited the cemetery. Please forgive if I look a little bit tired because we had some family ceremonies today and uh, when I'm like in these harsh circumstances my brain loves to sleep and honestly I sleep like very much and uh, like I know that some people who feel bad they don't sleep or they sleep a lot and I belong to this second group and I like can sleep like forever so I wake myself up to do some good things and for example to record this video and to thank you for your support for buying me coffees becoming my patrons for litting the candles in the memory of my mom and I honestly think I still do not understand the loss honestly like with all the things that I have to do around I didn't have time to like sit, feel and mourn. And uh, for the Ukrainian soldiers that you've seen yesterday and for the Ukrainian civilians, and this war is really tragic, but the support is really strong and we are grateful for that. Slava Ukraini.